Travis Wayne gets out. <clears throat> as much as I wanted to go back to sleep, Day of the Lord's coming. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Whether you're a, uh, a wise or a foolish virgin. So yes, we're about to witness the separation of the wheat and the chaff, the wheat and the tares, the sheep from the goats, the wise from the foolish virgins. All of scripture is talking about this day. It's not just Joseph Smith. It's just Joseph Smith kind of gave us the date. And so, the parable of the ten virgins, in Matthew 25, needs to be understood in the context that they didn't put chapters when they wrote this. So, when it says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened, it's still talking about the latter days. Matthew 24 is about the latter day signs. And so it's compared to Noah and fig trees, signs in the heavens that no man knoweth the day or the hour, despite Matthew already having given us the day and the hour at the beginning of his book. With signs in the heavens. And so, when it's talking about the kingdom of heaven, it's not talking about the afterlife. It's talking about the kingdom of earth. On earth. In the millennium. Someday my prince will come in the millennium. Lots of women in the singles wards were singing that song. <laughs> so... We need an opening and close, or at least an opening song, don't we? Let's see if we can. Oh, like a virgin. There we go. Madonna. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> like a virgin. <laughs> I should have known. Should have known. <laughs> Perfect. Let's go over it. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So who belongs in the kingdom? Only those who are members of the kingdom. And so is it the world? No. Only those who are members of the kingdom. It's supposed to be members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know, the Mormons. And so these ten virgins are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the latter days. And there are 50%, right? Half and half. So half of the Mormons are wicked, half of the Mormons are righteous, right? No. It's to show the polar contrast of two types of Mormon thought has nothing to do with 50% which took their lamps it's supposed to be who took their lamps that's a common error in scripture designed specifically to make God a witch rather than a who in Whoville. <clears throat> and so, what are lamps? And everybody thinks, oh yeah, it's our, our spirit. Yeah. Because the lamp itself is just clay. And so it's technically our bodies. 
And so the light within the lamp would be our spirit, technically. <clears throat> and what's necessary is to brighten our light. You know, the glory of God is intelligence, and gain more intelligence, so much more the advantage in the world to come, etc., etc. So if you're in the darkness, how dark are you? If you don't have light. And so, they went forth to meet the bridegroom. And of course everybody thinks Jesus, right? Ignoring the first vision, that Jesus says that Christianity is wrong, and that we shouldn't be Christian, and that Jesus, from the Nicene Creed, is an abomination in his sight. Mormons all miss this. All missionaries go and talk about it, and miss it. So the bridegroom is Mormon. Born and raised among the people of the world. Joseph Smith himself goes over this. Who's the Christ of Jews? Moses. And what did Moses say about a latter-day Christ? He would be just like him. In other words, the story of Moses is a parallel, a type and shadow, a prophecy of the latter-day man like Moses, whom Joseph Smith says is Mormon. Section 103, verse 16. And so this is their king of the kingdom of heaven. He's Mormon. The ten virgins are the members of the church. And notice it's not already a prophet of the church. They're waiting for the true king to replace the prophets of the church. Huh. Why would they need to be replaced? If it's not Baroque, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. There are already oil in the lamps. It's night time. Obviously you need to have oil in the lamps. It's a reserve oil. So they can keep on, keep on, keep on moving on and keep on. <coughs> and so they're not adding light to themselves. They're living on what they were born in the covenant with. Being raised up in Mormon Utah among their peers whose lights combined gave them what they call testimony. As the bridegroom was among them, A Mormon. And so the foolish ones are those who take for granted the scriptures that Joseph Smith added to. Not just the Bible, but the whole triple combination. Mormons take it for granted. They don't care to add to their light and intelligence. They're a part of the true church, that's all that matters. God will come down and say, hey, you're Mormon, come on in. You don't need to do any works. Faith without works is our new motto. So while the bridegroom tarried, oh, he hesitated. They all slumbered and slept, 
oh, that's like the prophets in the parable that Joseph Smith gave in section 101, starting in verse 43. Huh. Got lazy. And Peter also went to sleep when Jesus received the keys from Moses. Huh. Known a transfiguration. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Oh, like a thief in the night? Wednesday? Behold, the Mormon cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your testimony or you die. Hand it over. Reach for this guy. Can't give him the spirit. If you don't have it, it's on you. You've lived your life on borrowed peer pressure from other Mormons. Oops. The wise said, can't do it. We can't give you what we can't give. Try to go to the store to buy some. Maybe Walmart or Costco or Amazon has a bulk supply of it for you. Maybe you'll get prime delivery. <laughs> it's not going to make it in time. And so sure enough, while they went trying to figure things out for the second coming which was actually the first because he's a man a mortal man ray a drop of golden sun me a name i call myself and they that were ready went into the marriage and the door That pattern is followed in our temples, actually, for ceilings, as the woman enslaves herself to her husband to obey him. Don't think that Nelson took it away. It's still in the ceiling session. But yeah, they do shut the door. You can't get in when, you're, when it's too late. I mean, if Grandma's already in there and she needs to get some things taken care of, they'll stop it for Grandma. But if you show up to the temple, you ain't getting in. <clears throat> Afterward came the other virgins. I know you're not. You weren't listening. You don't know my voice. Is it 12... Yeah, it refers to the Matthew 7, 23. By their fruits you shall know them is also involved in that. Watch, therefore. That's a command. For ye know neither the day <laughs> nor the hour. <laughs> he doubles down. <laughs> Wherein the Son of Man cometh. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave us the hour after midnight <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> uh, yeah there's the parable of the talents that the church said was their justification for hoarding money and not giving to Mormons to make their lives better and pull them up out of their bootstraps rather than their own efforts because of the corruption of our government and economy and the church. <coughs> so, it's not complicated. you got to think in the mind of a Jew. If you're thinking in the mind of a Christian, 
even if it's a Mormon twist, you're going to be screwed up. You're going to be a foolish virgin. And you're going to look foolish. Because this wedding feast is the day of destruction. The great and abominable destruction. The abomination of desolation, the day of the Lord. That shall burn as an oven, and the thief in the night. Damn. Matthew, my hell. Do you not know that he gives us the day? See, Matthew chapter 1, he quotes Isaiah at the end here, despite not calling him by name. Say his name! Behold, a virgin, oh, a virgin, shall be with child. Oh, Madonna, Lady Madonna, children at her feet, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Oh my God! No, it's Emmanuel. He even says Emmanuel. He gives us the wrong interpretation. This is an anachronism interpretation. It's not God with us. It's the sun god at noonday of the Egyptians. Amen. Who Joseph Smith spells sun. Amen. The god Amen. And Joseph calls him Mormon. Born of mortal parents. And so if you haven't been listening to my videos, when you go to the temple and through your initiatories, the mysteries of God in Greek, <coughs> you are washed as a high priest, Zadok, and anointed as a king. And women are involved in this too, you know. Joseph Smith gave it to women too, which is Melech. Melchizedek. Oh, you're initiated into the Melchizedek priesthood. Wow. But there's a thing with becoming a king and the word anoint, which in Greek is Christ. So getting the Melchizedek priesthood makes you Christ. As a Mormon. You. Christ. And so Mormon parents, mortal, will give birth to the Mormon Christ. As all Mormons are Christ. So it shouldn't shock anybody. You may be caught off guard because you don't have reserve oil for your lamp. And you might blame the prophets. I hope you do. They need to be blamed. But I've told you. Amen. In Paleo Hebrew is the shortened version for Melchizedek. It's the universal symbol of the sun, the circle, and then the M, which is for high priest, and then the N, which is for king. The king and high priest, after the order of the sun, Amen. Melchizedek. So, again, why is it called Melchizedek? To avoid the too frequent repetition of the name Amen. That's why Jews think that they have to cover up Yahweh with Hashem, the name. Which Shem is name which from the Ogdod creation glyph of which the flood story came from Shem is Amun huh. I can go on and on but we're already at 20 minutes and I was hoping to keep this short just to talk about the ten virgins for you so yes we know the day and the hour see here's the the start of the latter days Matthew says now when Jesus which is Yah of Salvation, Sun Yah of Salvation. I can go on and further explain this as I've done in other videos, but 
was born in Bethlehem. Oh, where that virgin is in heaven? Because Isaiah says it's a sign. Where's sign, Matthew? You took out sign. Mm -hmm. Bethlehem is in the constellation Virgo, which is Spica, the house of bread. And so here we have another day, an hour. Wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying we have seen the star in the east. That's serious. The three stars of Orion's belt point to him for Christmas. So yeah, they're given multiple birth dates here. None of them are the actual one. You have to go to Luke, I think it is, or is it John? The shepherds are lowing, and it's Luke. Because it's peanuts, they quote Luke. Linus quotes Luke. Shepherds lowing in the fields. That's during the springtime. That's not Christmas. That's not September. For uh, Spica, birth in Virgo. That's now. Open them back. 